Hello again, this is Marxist, and this is episode two of my Rough Guide to Metalworks. We'll be talking about defending things on Metalworks. If you're looking for another part of the series, there should be links that appear around this time for you to click on that'll take you to the other episodes. I won't have those up, though, until the whole series is done. So a couple days at most, if you're viewing this, if you're an early bird viewer. Uh... But without further ado, we'll get on to a little talk about defense and what I mean by passive and aggressive. So when you're defending things in TF2, you need to think of things in as sort of belonging to two categories. And there are situations where you need to hold passively, and those are when you're at disadvantage in ubers or in players. Your goal with a passive hold is to just get out alive. You want to contest a little bit, maybe pop their uber if they've got it and you don't, or maybe get a single kill or just delay them for the sake of the clock, and make sure that you only lose one point instead of a whole bunch of points in rapid succession. It's a big mistake a lot of newer teams make where they'll stand way too close to the other team and then... A, a simple mistake ends up losing them an entire round or two or three points because they can never get a defense set up again. You'll utilize an aggressive hold when you have uber or player advantage and you mean to get to pushing very soon. So it basically puts you in a really good spot to get an advantage or to get ready to go in. So we're going to talk about an aggressive mid hold first. I've also decided to put the callouts on the actual picture so as to save time in the video and also provide a little bit of context so that if you're not familiar with the map and I start saying choke and lobby and all that nonsense, maybe you won't know what I'm talking about. So we'll talk about the combo first here. The pocket demo and medic all stand up in choke and the reason they do that and not in alley as a default hold is because it's really easy for your medic to get flanked if he's standing in alley not doing anything. So this is sort of the natural position to keep your medic alive. As far as pushing out of this position, the choke doorway is really hard to push out of. So it's generally not the preferred method, but you it's still possible. And then there's a wall in the way, but your roamer and two scouts are in dirt on dirt, just sort of watching things, rotating for a buff every 10 seconds, w waiting for something to happen. It's a, They're harder to get flanked there, and it's okay if they do. Also, I have I show the smaller size scout is the one that sort of hangs back and is getting ready to rotate for a buff. And then you'll eventually either decide to just push alley, or you'll get a kill somehow, and then you're you're ready to push. If anybody dies, then you need to go to your passive hold quickly. And this position is really nice for that too, because the medic can pull out to mid really quickly and have a lot of objects and things in his way and a lot of tiny doors that the other team's going to have to run through in the event that something goes wrong for you and you need to get your medic out of there. Now we're going to talk about the passive mid hold. You'll use this when you have uber disadvantage or player disadvantage. Obviously, if you've got player disadvantage, not everyone pictured here is going to be available to you. But you should try and mimic it as much as possible, and I'll go over what each person's sort of intention is. So, your pocket and medic are clear in the back, and they're building. The medic should actually, I like to stand in the doorway just to be extra safe. And you just build uber. Your roamer's going to stand up on the crates, looking down dirt and down onto the lower doorway. Your demo will have traps around standing on the point. A scout stands under the point, just to make sure nothing runs under it real quick, quick and sneaky-like. And then you have your other scout trying to get on top of the right side crates, so that if anything comes out of the main choke, upper choke lobby door type area, then you have some way to deal with that quickly. Now, ideally here, this is another thing that new teams do that's a big mistake. You can pop teams' ubers without losing anybody. Don't always assume, oh, they're pushing on us, time to suicide someone. If you've got your three projectile classes, you'll notice that the demo and both soldiers in this situation can see every doorway. And generally, most medics are going to pop when there's a pipe and two rockets coming at them. So the idea here is to pop them and then get out. 
or force them to lose players as they're pushing in by spamming at them as they come through the tiny doorways and then back out. And the way that you'll back out is that the scout on the crates would go alley and get into lobby that way or just run to second. The demo would just sticky jump out or sticky jump down into the lobby. So just off the point down over to the lobby. The scout under the bridge would just run out lower lobby and then the roamer in the pocket and the med would go choke and just exit that way. The objective would be to get a kill or pop them and escape with everyone intact or at least the players that you have alive at the time intact. Now we'll talk about aggressive second holds. So your pocket demo medic are going to be up on the choke door. Ideally, they'd kind of rotate and spam around. The roamer, I like to have him stand on the ground underneath in the drop-down area. The reason you do that is because he can spam things that try to go into the flank really easily, and he's super safe because anytime anything pushes on him, the demo or the pocket can just look at the ground and kill whatever's chasing him. And if he manages to land a rocket on something, one of your scouts from alley can just run and kill it really quick. It's a pretty simple task, and if that scout gets blocked by anything, then they die to the roamer. So it's really easy to execute pinch plays on anything that comes into the alleyway, which most teams prefer to push or get their picks in alley rather than messing around with choke all that much. So this defends against that really well. The big thing here is that you don't let yourself wander in to choke and end up losing your medic pocket or, or demo. But this is the easiest way to hold aggressively and to get ready for a push. Again, a lot of teams are going to rotate alley, so be expecting that. And it also puts you in a really good position that if they do rotate alley, it's really easy for your, your combo, or at least your demo and roamer, to go through the drop down and sort of lock them out of the alley. So a lot of teams like to play this more passively than I do, but... I'd say this is a pretty easy play for your, for your team to learn to execute, and it, it gets you used to rolling on your feet, kind of. So it's a little, bit more exam uh, a little bit more advanced than what I'd normally put in this guide, but I, I, it's just so good. You can't, can't really mess around with it that much. So this is getting ready to push, and it's really easy for you to push alley or choke in either case, assuming that the other team is close to you. So that is the aggressive second hold. Now we're going to talk about a passive second hold. So again, your pocket can see every single doorway. He's standing on top of the metal thingy there. And your demo can see two of them, the two most popular ways to push. And you have a scout on the left side standing on top of the ramp room. And he's mainly watching choke and lower. And then... You have your roamer and scout in the alley, basically. Roamer standing on top of the platformy thing, and a scout on the ramp behind him just to help out. And your goal here is to pop them or get away again. You'd use this when you're at disadvantage. And the way everyone would leave is basically the pocket medic, scout, and roamer would all try to leave through the main doorway on the point. Your scout goes ramp room and leaves and your demo goes shutter and leaves and that way you've covered every entrance into lobby as you're leaving ideally and that way you make sure that you're not going to get randomly flanked as you try to back out to your own last and that that can be the real thing that smites a lot of teams about passively holding second is they end up getting trapped somewhere or flanked through some doorway so this tries to prevent that Obviously, some players may not be around when you do this. The essential thing is that everyone's got one of the three doorways to back out of so that you know it's covered. Generally, you're going to have to sack your roamer on this, although ideally you won't have to. Generally, you will, because most teams are going to push alley when they have a huge advantage because it's easy to bomb their soldiers into you. And as soon as a soldier, there's a call that the soldier is in the air, as medic, you need to just get out of there. You're kind of a sitting duck on the point, and there's no sense trying to surf or, or really do anything. You need to just bail as soon as you hear the rocket jump. 
And uh, that's how to passively hold second. So now we're going to talk about the ever important subject of holding last. It's generally a tragedy if you don't run an off class on a last. The way that you go about thinking about what off class you want to have is is it a wipe of some sort and do they have huge advantage? If they've got huge advantage, but it's something like you wiped it mid and their medic didn't die, an engineer is not a bad choice. And the green arrows, or green X's rather, are where I would build a gun. Behind the crates on the right and underneath the bridge, fairly close to the wall down there, those are generally the best NG spots to build a gun. If you're a heavy, then just stand close to the right backside wall, close to the medic, so that you can get your 450 and rule the world with bullets that come out of your eyes. And then the rest of it's all fairly standard from there. If it's a midwipe and their medic didn't die, I would strongly encourage you to run the slowest possible last hold so as not to lose the round. So heavy NG would be your best bet. Sniper, I find not to be that effective on this last, and it's mainly because in order to see all of the doorways, the sniper needs to stand fairly far out from the spawn doors, and so you end up with a high probability of one of two things happening. A, they pick a doorway that the sniper isn't looking at, and then you don't do anything as a sniper, and you have a long trek back to spawn to switch to a useful class, or you do manage to pop them, but you still get caught out and die before you can get back into spawn and change yourself to a useful class. So I, it can be effective, especially given how passively teams like to hold on this last, but it's it just feels questionable to me, so I don't recommend it. Um, Pyro also has a lot of trouble on this map, mainly because it's very horizontal so or very wide so it's hard for the pyro to be on the right door and there's no real it's not like badlands last where you've got a pretty solid chance of catching them with your pyro if you just have him stand on the top right or gully wash if he stands at shutter you've got a, a one in three chance of being right here it's it's a little bit harder so he's not very effective either and then defensive spy just never makes sense so there's that uh but yeah so onto the standard hold so you're you're running either a heavy or an ng or both and in that case it'd be your scouts that would do that but you would have your roamer stand on the shack over the left doorway the only thing that he really needs to be careful about is getting sniped and the sniper could come up really close in main or from the right. The right particularly. So you'll need to be careful about that. And that's why I have a scout on the right side. Making sure that that sniper won't get that angle on your roamer. Then your pocket is back with the medic, heavy, and demo back towards the left side. If your pocket has built uber or you have uber then i like to have the pocket stand on top of the metal thingy that's in front of the shutter and essentially what you're doing here is guaranteeing that they pop at the door and then the soldier that was closest to wherever they popped uber will run away and try depending on how bad the situation is then he'll either go into spawn or try and hide for a little bit till things calm down and ubers are over you would obviously only have two soldiers roam like that in the event that you already had your uber then once they push in you either pop your own uber and try to kill a bunch of them or you rotate your demo man to the right side and potentially your pocket as well if you haven't got uber yet and your medic hangs with the heavy until he dies, and then you all rotate right and come down off that crate onto the point, or stand over the crate, or rather, on the crate over the point. So it's really hard for them to get on. 
you've got heels, you've got a little bit of coverage. If anything tries to flank you, they have to walk up either a tiny ramp or through a little tiny choke with your spawn doors against it. So any dead people may be just popping out on them while they try to execute that and they can't really get on the point because you're standing basically on top of it. So it's a pretty effective last hold. Most of the teams that I've played against have gone to doing this. You'll see some sniper, like I said, but I, I personally don't care for it on this map. So the main thing there is, is just make sure that you've got some sort of damage soak and a lot of damage soak if you're at a tremendous uber disadvantage and you'll be okay. And just rotate left and right based on where they push. So if they push in right, you're going to want to rotate onto the bridge. And if they push in left, then you're going to want to rotate onto that red in this case it's a red crate but it could be blue too you'll just rotate onto that crate and stand over the point so just try and manage that use your damage soaks well don't the soldiers that are pressed up the biggest mistake you could make is to die just spam rockets at them and then get out of there as quickly as you can go into spawn if you have to no one's going to take your birthday away if you go into spawn so that is the easiest way to hold last and that has been my rough guide to defending Metalworks. It's about the same time, a little bit shorter, because I tried to do some time-saving stuff. But the key thing, if you don't take anything else away from this, is integrate the idea of passive and aggressive holds into the way that you play the game. Don't be get caught standing too close to them when they're going to just kill all of you for doing so. So I hope you found this guide to be helpful and enjoyable. And maybe that the last section wasn't too boring. Until next time.